Well, hello friends. Welcome back to my channel. I know it has been a little while since I have shown myself around these parts, but I am back here on YouTube and I'm excited to bring you another video because I'm going to be sharing my new planning system. So let's get started. If you are new to my channel, my name is Saray. I'm super excited that you're here. I love to share all things planning, budgeting, organization, and lifestyle. I am here to share with you guys about my new planning system that I have been testing out for the past couple of months. I absolutely love it. Now, what I'm going to be showing you, it's not necessarily what I'm going to be taking in 100% into 2024, and that is because I am actually waiting on one more planner, new to me planner, that I am so excited to jump in that is very similar to this, but it does have some additional features that I would prefer instead of what I currently have. But I definitely wanna share with you where I am right now in terms of planning, and what I'm anticipating I'm going to be taking with me for the new year in 2024. One of my biggest goals in 2024 is to continue to try to simplify. I know I have tried to simplify in the past, but I finally feel like I'm, I'm getting there and really truly evaluating what's important for me, what I have time for, what I don't have time for, and just really what works. And this seems to be working really, really well so far. And of course, I might jinx myself as soon as I say that, but uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited to try this new system. So without further ado, let me share with you what I have been using and what I plan to take with me in 2024. I'll start by saying that these systems are completely new to me. I know that they have been around for a while. I have both of these in Moterm covers. So these are two covers that I found on Amazon. I know you can probably get them directly from the site, but I really wanted to just kind of test it out and see, and I kind of wanted to have it rather quickly. So uh, we know that we are not very patient with our planner supplies. So I ended up uh, ordering these two covers from Amazon. Uh, this is an A5 cover, so it fits a Hobonichi Cousin, which is the planner that I have in here. And then this is a, um, I don't know exactly which size this is. If I find it, I'll go ahead and post it here. But basically it fits a Hobonichi Weeks or a Sterling um, Common Planner, uh, which is the one that I have in here. So I have a Hobonichi Cousin and I have a Sterling Ink uh, Planner, which is like comparable to the Hobonichi Weeks. So that's what I have here and we'll go through um, these two planners. So I don't have anything like fancy set up for these yet because I really wanted to experiment with these planners and really get my hands dirty and I have like tons of like mock-up uh, layouts in terms of how I would use this planner. So it's really gotten um, kind of beaten up and like these tabs are things that I was playing around with. Um, these are, I'm listing them in the shop as well because I feel like I needed to have tabs to get me to the right spot because this planner does not include any tabs. So I will um, be listing these and there will be different. So these are not the final ones. These are the test ones that I was playing around with. So one thing that I realized is that I wanted to be able to read them not only from the front, but also in the back. So that is the change that I have made to these tabs. And also you'll see that there are some like colorful uh, options too. So to match the Hobonichi colors, although most likely I will not be using the Hobonichi, I will be using the Sterling Ink Common Planner, but that is the one that I have on the way and it will be arriving this week. And once I receive it, I will do a walkthrough of that planner. But there, uh, there's one main reason why I decided, and if it's everything that I think it is, uh, once I receive it and I'm pretty sure I will be. The main reason why I decided to go with the Sterling Ink is because it has really no color. So um, the Hobonichi colors don't bother me at all, like really, but I would prefer that they wouldn't have any color. 
So that's what I decided on the sterling ink. But I'll still be making the tabs in the colorful options too. So this one is a 2023 Hobonichi Techo Cousin. And I found it on Amazon for like $30. And I wanted to, again, play around with it and figure out how I wanted to lay it out. Um, but for the benefit of those that may not be familiar with the Hobonichi, I will do a walkthrough of the 2024 Hobonichi, which I also have because I thought I was going to be using that one. And just to kind of give you a layout of the pages in case you're not familiar. And then I'll show you some examples of layouts that I have in this one that I have played around with and one that I'm kind of feeling pretty comfortable with. So let's take a look at the 2024 version. So the Hobonichi Techo is an A5 planner. Uh, this one I order also from Amazon. You can order it directly from the Hobonichi site too, but again, I had no patience to wait because I wanted to really try it. And unfortunately, the corner did get a little bent here, but if I were to use this one, I would put it in the cover so that wouldn't bother me. Uh, but I'm not crazy about this posted color, yellow color on the cover. Uh, it is a pretty sturdy cover too. So again, the cover would kind of solve that issue. So I wouldn't have to look at this or this color here. But, um, uh, but again, uh, that's another reason why I most likely will be going with the sterling ink just because of the neutrality and the cover options are so gorgeous with the sterling ink. Now, this is the first few pages of the Hobonichi and you have a year at a glance for this year you also have a last year and then the upcoming year too which is great for future planning and then this pages sort of gives you the year at a glance with some check boxes up on the top and then basically dates for the entire month and you have the weekends that are highlighted so that you know that it's a weekend day and i already have some ideas on how i'm going to be using this pages I think here is the pages that I was playing around with and I'm thinking I might use it for habit tracking you can also maybe use it for mood tracking too I think so I'm gonna do it the long the long way here uh, so that's just some ideas and then kind of get some completion percentages of everything um, so I'm excited to kind of put it together and see how it all it's gonna look um, and set it up and I'll of course I'll walk you through my whole setup once I do but I have to keep remembering um, that I don't know if the sterling ink actually has these pages so I, I may be jumping a little bit ahead of myself if it does have these pages then this is how I plan on using it if you have a Hobonichi cousin or a, a Hobonichi planner that has this layout then maybe this is something and if you're struggling on what to use these pages for here's an idea on what you can use so this is the second half of the year and then it jumps right into the first month which I kind of like that these planners start with uh, a couple of months ahead uh, or a month ahead before the new year starts uh, and then you also get a couple of extra months into the following year so like you'll have from January through like March of 2025 in here in the monthly view so all of the months are together, which I really like this setup because it makes sense if you're uh, doing future planning, you have all of your months all together. I think that is super helpful to see everything at a glance. And then this is the, yeah, this is the last month. So it goes from December 23 through March of 25 then it jumps into the weekly view. The beautiful thing about these planners and why I decided to give this planner a go is so that I could have it all in one. If you have been following me for a while, then you know that I love to plan on a monthly, weekly, and then daily view. And I have combined planners in the past, also known as Franken planning in the community, to achieve my ideal setup to have all three in one. And there's not a ton of planners that offer that. There's a few, but this one is one of them and another reason why I love it um, and I love the idea of it. So then it jumps into the weeks 
you have starts it has a Monday start there's also like a there's a Japanese version there's an English version this is the English version and the paper let's talk about the paper I think anyone that tries these planners I think the paper is the biggest adjustment and it has taken me a few weeks to really wrap my head around it because is almost like the analogy that I would use is like starting a whole new diet in a way because you you are you kind of have to reassess everything that you have used in the past you know from the papers um, the pens that you've used or stickers that you've used a lot of things will still work but it does take a lot getting used to because the paper is so thin so the paper is the Tomo River paper very thin very see-through um, it, uh, it's pretty forgiving in certain areas like with water base I think it's designed to like you could even use watercolor in here I'm not brave enough to do that just yet but that's it's it's forgiving in that way and um, and I have been pleasantly surprised with how it works and it's super smooth um, it does get wrinkled over time um, but that doesn't bother me at all because for example, when it comes to books, the more worn out the book, the better for me. I love worn out books. And I feel like with the planner, it kind of achieves the same um, the same effect because as you're using your pages, they start to get a little more wrinkly. I absolutely love the sound of it. But I also love when after I've used a page and I am ready to plan on a new day, how that new page is like brand new and it does really symbolize the freshest start, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So you have, you know, a previous day that you've been, you know, uh, maybe you've been put through the ringer and it was tough and you got through it, but now you have this whole fresh page to plan on. And I think that, I don't know if that's symbolic of the paper or if I'm reading too much into it, but that's definitely how I feel about this uh, this Tomo River paper. So, all right. So we've been hanging out here for a little while. So basically, all of the pages are, all of the weeks are together the same way, which I think is also a wonderful setup. So they all blend in together. So like the end of January blends right into February, and it just continues on. This one was the trickiest part to put tabs on because there's no really no um, no guidance here in terms of where to put the tabs. So I just had to be careful, um, but it was also my test one, which I'm glad that I had one that I could just play around with and really break it in. Um, but that's one thing to note about these pages. And then I love that it has the week numbers too, like this is the 51st week 52nd week and then these weeks go this one goes through January 5th of 2025 and then it jumps right into these two grid pages I would love to use this as to like a, some sort of vision board the other adjustment that I feel that would be a big one too is if you're not used to writing on grid paper that might take a little bit of getting used to um, it did for me the grid paper is not very dark, which I like. It's very subtle. I like that, but it does. It did take a little bit of getting used to. Surprisingly, I thought that I would have to write smaller, but I don't. The sizing of my lettering is, has pretty much stayed consistent, but the biggest difference has been the closeness of the lines because the grids are so close together. Let me show you an example. So here's an example of a layout that I was playing around with. And you can see that, you know, the lines are much closer together. There's really not much space, which will condense your writing. If from a visual standpoint, I actually prefer that. I like it so much, but some people might not necessarily um, love that. So just something to keep in mind too, if this is another planner that you may be considering or if you've never tried it before. It's just some things that have kind of stood out to me that are different from anything else that I've, that I've, um, that I've used in the past. I definitely love the look of this and there's just so much room so that you can pretty much fit 
everything uh, within this planner and also the flexibility on how you can create layouts that are so different so for example um, this one when I first started using the planner I would still have all of my hours on the left hand side and I was handwriting them from like 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. the daily pages do include a little bit of an hour um, system but um, one is in military time so that's something else to keep in mind and the weekly does have that too so I wrote it in a way that I didn't have to think about it and also it goes from like 6 to 3 a.m. so that was kind of weird for me so I just wrote the hours to on the side and then I kept all the hours things here a little bit more condensed. There is a little bit of a line. It might be a little bit tough to see, but there is a line that sort of divides this quadrant with this bigger one. But I have eventually, as I got more comfortable with this planner, I ignored this line and I pushed it forward. So this is more of what my layouts look like right now. I felt a little I needed a little bit more room this way and then my to do's a little bit more condensed so that is the beauty of this planner that you can pretty much change it every single day and create something that works for you a little bit best now while the planner does start with the monthly view in December for, ex for example the daily pages do not start until the actual year so you're only gonna have from January 1st through December 31st for the daily pages in this planner which is the reason why i'm actually for december i'm still using the 2023 planner i haven't really moved into this one plus the fact that i have the other one coming i keep forgetting about that um even though i'm really excited about it i'm not sure why i keep forgetting but that is um something to to keep in mind so uh once i wrap up on december 31st i will be moving into the new planner now this is where some of the color starts and there is some built-in tabs so to speak with the colors on the side and every month is a little bit of a different color so january here is orange february is this brown and um, eight march is this purple so really nice and then before there's not a ton of notes pages in this planner but you do get your it's asking a lot of a planner and i'm thoroughly impressed that they're able to fit in all of these different pages in this planner for a whole year so definitely not complaining about that but there's not a ton of extra notes pages before the day before the month on the daily view you have this sort of blank page which I actually wish it was more grid so that you can continue to have the same uh, structure. But the pages are so thin. I actually, when I've written on these pages, I just used a grid in the back, you can see, to guide you to ensure that you have, you know, straight handwriting or you have the guidance that you need to create your structure. And then here's the daily page, which is really no different than what I just shown you on my example layout page and then basically that is what every page looks like through the entire month another big big plus this is one of the bigger pluses in my book <laughs> is that saturday and sunday do not share a page you have an individual page for each day and i absolutely love that I only know of two planner companies <laughs> that actually separate the pages. As much as I know about planners, I don't know of any other ones. So feel free to let me know if there's another one out there that you know of that have Saturday and Sunday separated. But the only other one that I know is Erin Condren. So it's Hobonichi and Erin and Condren for separate daily weekend pages. And I love that because my weekends are just as busy as my weekdays. So that it's another big big plus and then once it goes through the end of the month you have the last page and then here's your dashboard page again and then it basically repeats through the entire year for each each month here's the color for april may june july 
skipped a bunch. September, oh, August. September, October. Oh, landed right on my birthday. Um, November and December. And then it brings you to the last page. And then once you're on the last page, you have a few notes pages. So this one, this, this one, this one. And then you have some, some, a few extras like this timetable. So you can put in like, use this for like your ideal schedule or a class schedule if you have classes. This one is a graph paper to track anything that you wanna create a graph for. Although one of the things I love about the graph paper throughout this, this book is that you can create this in any page. You don't just need this one. Uh, an area to write your favorites, maybe movies, books, restaurants, meals, shopping. My 100, so this could be also books or even gratitude, anything that you want to make an entry for a hundred of. It's right here. An interview with myself. So kind of like a little reflection area, which is cool. Some recipes, some um, healthy habits for your eyes. Words to remember. I love this page, the 365 days checkoff sheet. I wish there was more of these, but of course you can create this throughout your planner. Um, but this is things that you can keep track of daily. And like some additional resources for your Hobonichi if you want to. And some gifts, tracking, addresses and then any personal notes, your personal information. And then that's it. And then that is the, the last of it. There are additional accessories too for a Hobonichi, like a clear cover too. I've seen people use a clear cover and then they decorate it, put stickers and things like that. Um, I'm planning on using the Moterm cover. So I probably want to use that. Um, and I did order one, but I think it was a little too big. So I couldn't put the plastic inside this one. And I also didn't try that hard to like try to fit it in. So maybe I'll look into that later on. But for now, this Moterm cover is working very well. Okay, and I wanted to share with you some of my more recent spreads and the one that I really found myself really enjoying this setup. Um, I did order some of these hourly washi from Sterling Inc. Although it doesn't line up perfectly because the grid size in the Hobonichi Cousin is different than the grid size in the Sterling Inc. But it doesn't bother me. It's just a nice little guidance to guide me to structure my day. So it's no big deal. Um, so that way I wouldn't have to write them in. Uh, I may create my own different hourly washi, kind of like how I used to do it in my EC Petite daily planner. So just more to come around that. Uh, but as, as you can see, the hourly schedule side is a little bit wider than the habits and the to-do sections. Um, this top right here, I use it to just it varies every day. Sometimes I'll decorate it with a sticker. Sometimes I'll do some lettering. Sometimes I will uh, write habits um, or medication. So I'm taking some medication right now. So that's what I've been doing um, up here just so that I don't forget. And one of my favorite things about this planner that I really enjoyed is that I found myself lately not really wanting to have a separate journal um, book. I don't feel like I want that pressure right now to have to journal every single day. Um, so what I have been doing is I've been using a black pen for all of my main events, but anything that I want to notate or anything that is extra important or whatever it is, I just write it down with write little notes throughout the day of things that I just want to document about the day. 
Um, so that is a little bit like journaling, but without sort of that pressure. And I'm really, really loving this um, concept because it's just, I don't know, ideally I plan out my day and ideally I kind of keep track of, you know, did I, did I do what I was supposed to or what I set my mind to do or um, did anything get in the way for me to do it or was I just not feeling like it or anything like that so I just kind of I like to journal right within my schedule by the end of the day so I just I just like that for example the end of this day my husband and I went for a walk um, and it was like the most beautiful winter night like it was there was no wind it was really cold but there was no wind and it was just like perfect winter night and we walked into town and Stephen was like being silly and we took some pictures and then I put the pictures in my planner so it's like all all in one I'm so happy um, with this planner I can't even tell you and it's crazy because I've had this planner in my cart and in my to buy list for I kid you not like three years I would just never you know go for it because I thought that it just wasn't something that I was gonna I wasn't gonna like but it ends up being that everything that I procrastinate in a way like I push out or I don't I, I don't act on um, later on when I decide to I always say to myself that I wish I had moved into this sooner because it is just it's wonderful for me so far um, so the same thing with this one so I went to get my nails done and I put in a picture here uh, for that for example I had a doctor's appointment I wanted to make sure that I didn't forget my glasses um, so I wrote a note about that and then I actually ended up getting new glasses so I will get new glasses coming soon and I know exactly you know when that was so I, I just love this <laughs> I love this so much and here's an example of a weekly spread um, Again, I'm kind of still finding my way through this one, so more to come and more to share. But basically, I just kind of use it as like main appointments that I have and my ideal week for this week and things that I want to get done. And then I reference this when I'm planning my day. So I, when I'm planning my day, I reference the weekly, the weekly spread and then I also uh, reference the monthly spread. And I just put a little bit more details here and then in the daily I put even more details in things that may, ha may have come up um, for the day and also I did want to share just from a sizing comparison in case you're not too familiar with an a5 planner this is the Hobonichi and below I have an Erin Condren 7x9 so this gives you an idea of the sizing uh, is definitely a very portable planner like it was like a little it's a little planner that could let's jump into my next one as I mentioned this is also a mo term cover this band right here is from Barnes & Noble I was there recently and this is supposed to be like a page marker and I just could not get over how beautiful it was so I'm like I need this so I ended up getting it and I just kind of use it there's some pockets in here as well and then I have my sterling ink so this one the sterling ink I haven't I just kind of started diving into it I haven't really set much things up um, yet but basically it has this year at a glance and the sterling ink planner it's gonna have a very similar look and feel it's the same type of paper and you can see how minimal it is so this section right here has for goal breakdowns you can write some goals um, priorities for Q1 and then a very similar layout for those like um, trackers in the front I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna be using these for but I'm assuming the other planner the a5 planner is gonna have that too so I might do something similar to that but you can see how minimal the design is there's no color there's no like moon faces and things like that which I don't really track so I'm excited for that one this is Q2 Q3 and then Q4 
And then um, it jumps into the monthly view. So it starts with December of 2023. This is a weekly, a weekly planner in the horizontal layout because they have also a similar one, but it's a vertical layout. So this is the month, all the different months, and it goes through December, no, it goes through January 2025 and all the months are together, so very similar. And then this is what the weekly view looks like. So you have, I love, this is one thing that I like about the Sterling Inc. versus the Hobonichi Weeks, is the Hobonichi Weeks does not have, or at least the one that I have, doesn't have the grid on this side. There's no lines, but this one does. Again, very minimal. So it goes from Monday through Sunday. And then this page is sort of like just open for you to jot down whatever you would like. I'm gonna show you an example of what I'm thinking I might use it or how I've, I've used the Hobonichi Weeks before I received this one because some of those ideas I will transfer to this one. There are um, numbers here for the month. So, but again, very minimal. So this is February, April. July and it guides you so you can put tabs in here if you like and one of my favorite features there's so many things I love about this little planner but look at that gold I'm gonna take it out of the cover look at that gold foiling on the edges and this blush color it's just it is absolutely gorgeous I just it's so so beautiful this could be a great planner for on the go so all of those things can work now once you get through all of your weeks it gives you some notes pages so this will be and it lays flat pretty flat i mean i could even like bend it more if i want to so it it helps a lot for to write without the coil in the way so then the rest of these pages are all notes pages and I've already all this different little tabs that you see here are things that I have decided how I'm going to set it up. So um, once I have them all finished, I will do a walkthrough of my trackers, but uh, here I'm going to keep track of annual tasks and I've created these are all um, I've created them. I'll probably list them in the shop. <clears throat> if anyone is interested since I'm creating them for myself anyway um, and then I'm gonna put some monthly tasks in here and then uh, this one it will be for lists I'm leaving some empty pages in between just so that I have a little bit more flexibility in case in case I think of anything else that I want to add and then I have so lists like you know, shopping list, brain dump lists, anything like that. I'm gonna have like a weight tracker here too, um, a mood tracker, and then this one, I worked on it recently. This is my cycle tracker. So this is sort of like what I'm anticipating some of the trackers will look like. And again, some of these components I've, I've created and they'll be coming to, to the shop. So very practical and functional planner, and I cannot wait to dive in. Let me show you those examples that I mentioned earlier. Okay, so here's the Hobonichi weeks for 2024. And this one actually started, the weeks started on November 27th, so that's why I was able to use it. And I kind of went back and forth in terms of how I wanted to use it. And I really love this setup. It does take a little bit of time to set it up earlier in the week, but it might be something that might be useful if I want to track certain things um, like my water intake, sleep, steps, weight, or in my weekly tasks. And here I was kind of keeping track of workouts or appointments and things like that, or my meals. I kind of went back and forth. I was just kind of playing around with it. And then the other week I used it as a meal planner. So I had my, um, all the different meals that never got put in here. 
um, but we'll see I'm just trying to figure it out and then I also had a shopping list of things that um, I wanted to make and then also I put these little tabs in here as I was designing them um, for this planner or like the other planner and then these other um, tabs up on the top so I will be putting tabs on this one on the top um, as well to identify where I am in each section just so that it gets me to it quicker but that is how I'm thinking I might use this one uh, of course again it will evolve over time but I just like how much I can it, it's really impressive how much you can fit in this in these little planners so that's where we are with this uh, planning system I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys how I set up my planner and all of that good stuff because I love seeing all that stuff too and getting some ideas on how I can best set myself up for success in 2024. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I hope that you enjoyed this walkthrough of my current system and where my thoughts are in terms of planning needs for the new year. Let me know if you have any comments or questions. Uh, I'm definitely still learning and kind of finding my way through these systems. So I'm sure that it will evolve as I grow with it and I get more comfortable. This is a completely new way of planning for me, especially after being in a very, the same system for years previous to this. So this is like the biggest change I have made when it comes to my planning since 2015. This is by far a, a big one, but I'm enjoying my time so far, kind of just digging into these planners and finding my footing and getting more creative and simplifying it at the same time since it's definitely a much more streamlined system compared to what I've used in the past. So thank you so much for joining me today. Again, let me know if you have any questions or comments down below. Happy to chat with you guys about this. And as always, friends, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye. <laughs>